All right, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to sew um, pin loom blocks together, at least the method that I use to sew pin loom blocks together. So um, I, well, first thing, I just want to show you where you're going to be sewing. When you have your pin loom blocks, you have two little loops on the sides. Um, you're going to have a big, one loop that's first and the second loop. And I'm showing you now that um, where these loops are. And so, yes, that's what we're going to be so focusing on, on both parts that we're sewing um, the pin loom. I'm going to go ahead and just trim off the um, little tails where I tied my square knots. Um, you, you might want to, if you want to be working with more than one color, you may want to go and learn how to tie a square knot. Um, there's a lot of videos on YouTube that show you how to tie a square knot. That's what I use. It's a pretty secure knot, and um, that's what I use for joining. That's just one way. There are other ways you can join. So first thing is, is that I am going to lay my scarf, and I've been working um, sewing as I go. So this is the last panel that I had to sew. And um, you may not know, I somehow <laughs> it worked out that this part, um, the, the gradient should be on the other side. So I ha I'm going to have to add some yarn to this. I turn my square so that the gradient is moving into um, the lighter color. All right, so as you can see, I'm just threading my needle, pretty much using the same needle that I use to weave. And because my um, tail is in the wrong place, I am going to have to just work this one in. And then I'm just going to go ahead and start so that my gradient, my squares are matching up and the gradient's right. So I'm just going to give this a little bit, um, just go through it one extra time just to make sure that you know it doesn't pull through but that um, where I joined it is pretty secure and now here's what you're going to see me do I'm going to go back and forth um, as I've said in other videos I'm not really ambidextrous I've just gotten good at using both of my hands you don't have to do it this way you can use the same hand I'm going to okay so I'm going to go in one loop and then I'm going to go in the next loop on the other side we're going back and forth so I'm going to go to the next loop beside it, the next loop of the pair. And then I'm going to go to the other side. And I'm going to go into the next loop on the other side. And I'm pretty much just going to go back and forth. At some point, I think that I got stopped and I had to stop the video and I am I end up going down as opposed to going up but you're, you you're pretty much just going back and forth back and forth between the sides yep pause the video and I'll be back here I go so now I'm going to go I think I, I continued. All right, I'm going back. Yeah, I got confused, so. All right, so this is good that this happened because um, it doesn't matter if you go up or down. Now I'm gonna be going from the top as opposed to going under. As long as you're going back side to side, it doesn't matter and you're just going to pick up the loop, one of the pair on one side and then the next pair, next of the two loops on the others. And these are the loops that are formed as you're weaving. And you're gonna go back and forth. And what's neat about doing it this way is that when you're done, the loops kind of interlace with each other, kind of like how you can interlace your fingers together. And um, the join is a really neat join. It's not particularly bulky either. And so, it's almost like a zipper. That's what I think of it. It's kind of comes together really neatly. And um, yeah, that is pretty much it. This is in real time. This is not um, slowed down time lapse. This is actually real time of how it, how I, you know, 
of sew pieces together. And then when I get to the end, what I generally do is I run my thread back down the seam like so. And so I'm just going to work down the seam to make it to hide my end. And I'm going to go, you know, a couple of inches down and just pull it through carefully. And then I'm going to go and yeah, decide to do a little bit more. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually weave down one of the um, warp threads. And I may do a couple more just to make sure that that end is secure. I'm not going to secure this whole piece of yarn because it's a whole lot longer than need be. And then I'm just going to snip it. That's not going anywhere. It's good. And that's it. Now, this is the that little end that I um, that I didn't use. And so now I'm just going to work this end in. To do that, I'm just going to, you know, thread it through a row and pull it through. Then go over a row and thread that through. And pull that through. And I think, let me see, what am I going to do? Then I'm going to go, and I'm going to go backwards <laughs> down a row. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much how I hide my end. So nothing super fancy, it's just, you know, follow the color that you're using, and it just disappears in your weaving. And that is it. You are done. And this scarf is done. Stay tuned for pictures.